good almost afternoon everybody um it's almost at that middle part of the day and it already is at the middle part of the week um i was just i just said um twice you i was just behind a student driver and i just turned the radio down and watched them learn to drive and clearly it was someone that um, hadn't had any experience and so it was it was an interesting little show I was watching but of course it brewed something up in my head um, for a message and so that is why I'm live right now so I'm behind the student driver and they were terrible I'm just gonna say it they were um, they stopped like way before the stop sign um, not that it's bad to start breaking then or anything um, they went to pull in somewhere and decided they didn't want to pull in there we're on a two-way road and like swung back over into the lane it was bad that's the point point. and as I was watching that student driver it made me think about Jesus and um, my experience with Jesus and my experience with driving. So my experience with driving was basically, um, you know, everyone has different childhoods and experiences. And whenever I was younger, we did a lot of things in the country. And so my dad, um, even back whenever before that, um, I have really strong memories of Woodlock um, over off 242 whenever we lived there and I was tiny because the flood was in 94 so this was like before that but my dad would always let me whenever we would turn on Woodlock he would uh, let me sit in his lap and I would get to steer okay and um, you know he he would tell me oh no you need to get over a little bit and he completely let me be in control of the steering wheel not the pedal okay and um and over the years, whenever we would be in the country and stuff, he would let me, um, you know, it was like he was giving me more privileges. I could use my blinker. He was teaching me about the different things in the vehicle. And um, so I think that whenever I did start taking driver's ed, I was, um, I was a little bit more advanced than others. Um, you know, there's, there's, in the arcades even like the little car games those are you know they they give you the concept um, and stuff like that and so they they help in my opinion Lord forgive me if you don't well don't forgive me but forgive you if you don't believe that but anyways um, and that kind of goes to the other day I was talking with um, one of the monster truck drivers and I was like so like when did you start and he said, well, the first time I ever got in a monster truck was, I think he said it was like two years ago. And I was like, okay, so, because a monster truck is not like a car at all. They have like rear steering. They got to be operating in two different ways and all kinds of other stuff. And so, um, I said, okay, so on that day, you just like jumped in the monster truck and went for it. And he was like, well, on that day, it really wasn't planned. Um, but yes, some, I was at, I guess he was like at somewhere and someone was like, Hey, go get in. And he just figured it out. Like that was that. And so, um, whenever he was sharing that, it just made me think of the same thing that I thought of today while I was behind that student driver. And, and it really sunk in with like our relationships with God. And as parents, if you're a parent or even just an individual, um, a mentor or someone that people might look up to, it's important um, to be an example. And so what I'm trying to say here is if you are a parent and you aren't close with the Lord or you know of the Lord or whatever, then you know, or if you do, and that's even more important, but I feel like the ones who are kind of just like on the fence or just, they haven't been in a while or whatever, but I believe that as you are transitioning into a parent, that it's so important 
to start introducing those tools, like to start, you know, putting that child on your lap and letting them steer and um, showing them the blinker, showing them the ways of life, that things are going to go this way, things are going to go that way. And um, really just giving them the resources and then if they want to listen and pursue that at some point in their life, that's their choice. But um, it's important to show them because it is um, the driver of life. It is the, the, the purpose why we're here and even finding their purpose is even stronger, you know, but it's, you know, and some parents don't know that. And so like for me, I knew there was a God. I knew about Jesus. I knew to pray, but I didn't know about that relationship that I was supposed to have with him. I didn't know. Um, I didn't ever even own a Bible other than the one that my sister threw away and I took out of the trash, um, which was an Old Testament Bible and made no sense to me. But I didn't, I was never given the tools or um, trained um, about like how he answers prayers and the things he does. Um, over time through like families that I would go and hang out with or um, like friends, families or whatnot or just in public and this and that on TV, it was rare, right? But there were times where I started being introduced to that and I was very hungry for it. And so uh, whenever I had my son, I knew that um, I wanted him to know the Lord, but first I had to know the Lord. Like you can't, I can't teach someone how to drive if I don't even know how, you know what I mean? And so I, I, that's the first thing I did whenever I had left, um, uh, my ex, his dad or whatever, but I went into a church and I have literally been going every Sunday since. And I'm not saying that you have to go to church or anything like that, but it is a very important part of um, a relationship with God. It's like, oh, um, you can be in a marriage, but you don't have to go on dates, you know? Yeah, you don't have to go on dates, but they are important. You know, that time um, just with others that are together or doing the same thing or whatever, that is important, you know? Like, um, but there's many, um, sorry, I didn't like straighten my hair really today, so it's kind of froey. But, anyways, um, can't stop touching it. Um, there's many, many things in life that need to be taught. And, um, I believe the most important is that relationship with God. And it's up to each of us. If you're watching this, you're obviously old enough to do it yourself, but you can't let distractions or anything get in the way, um, or comfort zones. Uh, something else that really like touched me this morning was, uh, there's even the sweetest lullaby um, was obviously written by an enemy and it's so true. And it's, you know, rock by baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Well, that's like your comfort zone, like, Oh, soothing the baby. And then when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall down will come baby cradle and all. I mean, really? I heard that. Like I was, and I was like, that's sick. Like whoever made that, like they're they're soothing a baby and then the thing's going to break and the baby's going to fall. You know, that's like what the enemy tries to do is he tries to soothe us and keep us in this comfort zone just to sit there and like watch it, watch you break and fall and hurt yourself. And it's our job to jump up out of that swing, get out of that comfort zone, grow up and, you know, do what you know in your heart is right and what you need to do. Um, and don't let anyone get in the way of that or distract that because that is the enemy working through people. And so, um, you know, there's people out there that didn't get the opportunity. I almost didn't even get to go to driver's ed because back then I was, that was whenever things were really crazy in my life and I didn't have like the funds or whatever, but I had somebody that God placed in my life that paid that. I think it was like two seventy five, but back then, my goodness, that was like a million dollars to me. And so... Um, I remember, uh, my grandma Nellie paid for that actually. And, you know, but if I didn't get that opportunity, like some don't, um, then 
I wouldn't have had that license and then I would have just went, you know, through life and I, I don't know, it probably would have been more if it wasn't done in school. I have no idea, but I would have possibly not, you know, learned how the right ways and the rules to drive and stuff. And so it's important that you do that. Like that, that driving test, um, is like in that book that they give you, it's like the Bible. It's important that you read the rules and stuff. And interesting enough, I'm going to share this one last thing, but whenever I was in court a couple weeks ago for a ticket, um, my first ticket, um, but this boy there, he, he's a boy, he was young, but he told the officer, he said, well, I just don't get it because I, um, I, I think it was a stop sign or something. He said, I stopped at that stop sign. And the officer was like, well, sir, did you, did you stop for three seconds or something like that? And he was like, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't counting. And who's, whoever made up three seconds. And the officer just shook his head. And that's kind of the same thing today. It's like, he said, well, it was in the book. You know, that book isn't just a book like for you to have and learn one time. It's a book for you to use and keep it updated because laws change, things change. Um, but it's very important that you listen to, you know, and you go and you obey all of those rules in that manual, that driver's ed manual, because though, you know, those are very important. You know, you use your blinker so that you don't get hit. You do this so that that's what the Bible is. You do, um, you don't sin because you're going to end up with a bad result. Those stories in the Bible, they are examples. I'm so annoyed. I literally have learned how to just take deep breaths whenever people make comments of, oh, but that's like the old days and blah, blah, blah. That's not even normal. And, um, you know, this is the, you know, 2019. We don't have to listen to all that. Said who? Okay. Like, is that, what are the people like, my son's age gonna say whenever they're this age I mean we can't think like that that's not right like yes we do have to listen to those those are stories and examples of people that got hurt and went through battles and were you know experiencing like really horrible things and how they overcame them and how they you know they're telling us these things so that we avoid things that we're blinded by um you know and that's important and that's why I do what I do like I tell stories because so many people and I think like Um, High school and college students are like really like heavy on my heart lately, but those are the people that need to be reached. Those are the ones that are in relationships, like thinking that that's their life and all this stuff. And I thought the same thing, but I'm trying to share my stories so that they can learn from my mistakes, just like Jesus and his, you know, disciples and everything share their stories and people, you know, are learning from their mistakes. But in a more modern way is telling our own stories and how we got hurt and how we overcame it so that others, you know, aren't wasting their time on something and blinded and think that, you know, this and that. Like, one thing that I repeat often, but my dad always told me, and obviously relationships is, um, relationships and having kids and stuff is something that I speak of often. Um, But my dad, you know, if he told me one thing um, that I recall... um, very clearly is he said wait to get married and have kids until you're 30. I thought he was absolutely crazy and out of his mind. Why? Because I love children. I the number one thing and vision and dream in my life was to um, get married and have kids and have a family because everyone that I babysat or whatever always said that oh my gosh you're gonna be such a great mom and blah 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 so what did I do I met a guy and um, that was in high school he you know put me through a lot of pain and I put up with it because I that was my comfort zone for so long and you know we went through a whirlwind of things in seven years and ended up with a kid and I love my kid He's the world to me, and sorry, my voice is still kind of hoarse. Um, I've had a sore throat, but, you know, I didn't get to take a lot of opportunities that I could have if I didn't have a child, Um, but I think that, you know, that's what I'm doing now, Um, and I'm able to use that, you know, now, but I, you know, that's one thing, if I could share, you know, something with the younger crowd of people is don't lock yourself down into a relationship. Don't, um 
you know, like you're still in school, like enjoy it, like enjoy figuring out you and what your purpose is and, you know, and what you want to do and, you know, I'm still, I, I was still learning what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do and things that, you know, people always said, you need to find yourself. And I was like, I ain't lost, boo. I done found myself. I'm right here. No, but on a serious note, I've learned more about myself whenever I just put energy into myself and, you know, the things that were on my heart and that I loved instead of other people. And that's what I did for so long as I was doing things to please other people and to make them happy so that I would eventually, um, in my, in my head, I thought like, okay, well, I'm just going to do this and do that and bow to this person, bow to that person. And then I'll be able to, you know, get the result that I want. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Um, it's, it's all about, you know, living for that, that moment and for God and for him to open doors and to make ways and to show you what your purpose is. And then that is whenever things will just all fall together. And so, um, you know, life, life gives us a lot of different a lot of different things and we have to identify what we're really supposed to be going after and what we're really supposed to be doing but I am rambling at this point I hope somebody made sense of something that I said but I just wanted to share that with all of you because it is really important so even if you don't have kids and you are someone that someone might be looking up to or something like that just remember just like that car you know, that I saw with that student driver, like we have to direct them. We have to be that example and we have to, um, be someone that we would have wanted to look up to as a child. Um, you know, if, if they're around, you can't be, you know, cussing or this or that. You're supposed to be sharing with them like your faith and like your dreams and how your, your dreams, you know, where they're at and, um, the tools, and the, the road that you went on to get there and stuff, you know, that actually would impact them and mean something to them. And so anyways, uh, yield, I'm gonna leave on this note cause I'm a theme person, yield to everything. Um, uh, turn the green light on for God and stop and turn the red light on and put the caution tape or caution barriers, whatever, up whenever you're not sure. And make sure that you know that there is one way to get to heaven. And that is to have that relationship with God and ask him for forgiveness of your sins and to obey him. And so that is my message for right now. But y'all have a wonderful day. Love y'all.